It's first day at NBAA 2010, and, and obviously there's just tremendous things to be seen in terms of biz jets and, and, and all kinds of very high-tech, very expensive things. So what's the EAA doing here? Come on. <laughs> That's a great question, Jim. You know, EAA is a very big part of all things aviation. If you've attended AirVenture, uh, you take a look at AirVenture and you can see not only the home-built guys there, which we're famous for as part of the core of the EAA, but you see all the other segments of aviation represented. And not only is it well represented, it's continuing to grow and grow each year. Now, one of the things that obviously pops up when you talk about AirVenture and some of the things that have occurred over the last few years, to a certain extent, it's become, you know, Paris on the other side. It's become the national trade show for aviation in North America. And, and great, you know, we, we needed it, and it's a better place would be hard to find under the circumstances. But can you sustain all the things that are going to be necessary to appeal to a very high-end crowd and keep attracting them back to AirVenture year after year after year, uh, especially in concert with events like this? I think the answer is yes. And uh, the reason I'm confident in saying that is because if you look at the history of the last 25 years, look at how things have expanded at AirVenture. So each one of the segments that we represent, certainly our core, what we call our divisions inside of EAA, but the vintage aircraft, the warbirds, the ultralights, the home builders, if you take a look at those sections or segments of aviation, they continue to grow and expand. If you would ask any of us 30 years ago, if we would say that we would believe the following statement, that 20% of the aircraft fleet will be home built, I think many of us would have said, well, probably not. But guess what, that's the case today. So those segments continue to be very important to aviation, all segments do. Aviation, as it will grow, we're in a tough recessionary period in the last few years, but aviation will grow, and it's EAA's role to not only welcome in all segments of aviation, but give them a home. So give them a home to celebrate. You know, let's not forget that aviation is really fun, it's exciting, and a new development that's happened in the last few years at AirVenture is the innovation that comes to AirVenture is tremendous. So we're seeing the what we all refer to as the big iron guys, not only showing up to participate, enjoy and celebrate the aviation lifestyle, they're bringing staffs of engineers, they're bringing staffs of marketing people to look for new ideas, to find ideas and creativity and innovation across the spectrum of aviation. And we welcome that. The beauty of the Release 9 system architecture is that you have two fully redundant integrated flight displays. Each has access to all the systems and data. Providing full redundancy and eliminating traditional reversionary modes, Release 9 allows either display to be configured as the PFD. Now your failure modes are much more manageable because you can continue to fly with the same familiar display symbology without the need to relearn composite modes you don't typically fly with. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is truly the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology. Well, I want to start talking a little bit about how your life has changed since September 7th, but before we get into that, you're on a very active floor with a truly diverse crowd of people. What do you want the EAA message to be to this crowd about your mission, your organization, and your future as everybody keeps uh, walking by in search of the next $50 million bizjet bargain? <laughs> you know, our crowd uh, at EAA is um, something that will surprise most people. If you think of our crowd as the core of the home builders, you're absolutely right about that. But our crowd represents pilots across the entire spectrum of the aviation world. So what is important for our membership to know is, why are you at NBAA? Our partners are here. Many of our very important constituents are here. The companies that are driving innovation into the marketplace, the materials, the products, the technology that we're all buying to put in our airplane, whether it's type certificated or whether it's experimental, they're all here. Many of them are here to do business, obviously, and sell more hardware, hard goods, but also there's the opportunity for relationships. The relationships that are prevalent at NBA are very important to EAA, very powerful, and put to work to the right use, very beneficial to our entire membership. Okay, big question. Life changed a little bit for you September 7th. You not only took on new responsibilities, but you walked into an organization that had been, quote unquote, the family business for, oh, a few years. There are a lot of folks who would take a look at that, turn around in the opposite direction and run screaming, but no, you took it on. Okay, what's happening, how's it going, and are you ready to take that job at McDonald's yet? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I'll tell you, when you, first of all, my business experience, you know, started at a very young age in my life, age 15, and my brother and I founded a small business, and as, uh, as, as a founder of a business, and as a family business, uh, I understand what those dynamics are all about. But I think the most important thing to remember about the Pobreznys is we have two generations of Pobrezny. 
the founder who took it to a very high level, and then Tom who took EA to an even higher level. It's my job to take it to the next level. And it's important to remember that the legacy of the Pope Bresney family is a powerful and important legacy to the aviation industry. What they've done, what they've created, and what they continue to, to, to bring forward to the aviation world is very impactful, very powerful. We measure impact in a lot of ways, but one of the things that's important is, especially in this crowd, the aviation GDP. Are we flying more fleet hours? Are we buying more equipment? Are we putting more pilots in the pilot population? Uh, EA has a very strong presence and a very strong place there. So here's the most exciting part about the job. First of all, who doesn't love airplanes in this crowd, right? If you, you will find something for everybody. But I can say that um, the most imp impressive part for me, coming on board as a new CEO and a non Poberesny, the staff that we have are very capable, very smart professionals, very experienced professionals, and obviously their passion and dedication to aviation is, is unquestionable. So I am most impressed with the staff. The second thing I'm most impressed about is the breadth and depth of EAA. EAA's involvement across the spectrum of aviation is enormous and impactful. And as a 21-year member, I can tell you, I was less than aware of some of that impact and the breadth and depth of that. I'm certainly aware of it now, and it's wonderful. It's all good. Now, another moment of freedom from Sirius Aircraft. Freedom through safety. Perhaps the ultimate freedom is confidence, assurance, and peace of mind. We design it into every personal aircraft we build. It's the security that comes with knowing you're flying the plane with a parachute. The breakthrough concept that launched the Cirrus phenomenon. How's the working relationship right now with Tom? It's one thing to be the guy looking for the job. It's another to have the job and be talking to the guy that you're actually in some part replacing. Right. Well, great. It's fabulous. And I'll tell you why. Tom and I have had a very natural relationship from the very beginning of my process to the moment that I onboarded. We've had some very private and personal conversations about leadership style, what we expect from one another, what we expect to drive the organization forward. So those values, those standards, that mutual trust and mutual respect very solidly founded on our early, early in our relationship. Tom is not leaving the aviation world and he's not retiring and he's not leaving EAA. Tom is very much an active part of EAA. He's going to focus on the things that are very important for the future of EAA and the success of EAA. He's going to spend his time on governance issues. He's going to spend a lot of time with their philanthropic and development community, our partners and our business partners. That's an important place to be. And as I learn, as my training will stay on for the next couple of years, Tom is a very instrumental, has a very instrumental role bringing me up to speed on all things EAA and Air Venture. Tom will remain chairman of Air Venture for this year. I'll step in next year. Have you been able to identify yet any major differences in the Poberesny management style and the Hightower management style? You know, there's a, there's a fundamental difference, I would say, and that's based on experience. Um, it, it happens to be a very complementary difference. You know, Paul is is widely known for his warm personal approach and Paul is one of those uh, individuals he's a rare he has a rare gift you know Paul is better at talking you into something than you are at talking your way out of it <laughs> that's right so he has that gift um, Tom has the gift of outstanding relationships Tom is an outstanding relationship developer and he especially connects well to the business world and to the broader world of aviation as well as the FAA the regulatory environment and, and uh, the legislative environment. So Tom has brought a, a whole different set of skills to the table for EAA. The fundamental difference between Hightower and the Pope Resnies, I come from big company background. Remember I started a company at a very young age, so I understand that part of it. But big company backgrounds utilize processes to get a lot of things done. So one of the things that the big company will teach you how to do is not only get a lot of things done well, but get a lot of things done that matter. So the focus is on the priorities for the EAA. The focus is moving forward and growing aviation, growing participation. Um, those skill sets running large organizations with a lot of moving pieces and parts come well into play at the EAA.